Hello and welcome. My name is Abhinav. Uh, I am the editor of the Fine Print, and the English Press Club is trying for the first time uh, a new format. We're gonna we have a podcast. So I am very pleased to have with me today, uh, Mr. R. Sundaram. He uh, is from the batch of seventy nine uh, to eighty three, and uh, he is the editor of the first Cactus Flower. Cactus Flower is the annual publication of. Uh, Bich Bilani and it has continued till this day. Uh, so I have with me two other members of the English Press Club. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Samaksh. Um, I was the AP editor of my batch. Uh, I am Saksham. I am the Cactus Flower editor for 2019 onwards to 2020. Well, I am Rama Sundaram, which is an abbrevi- abbreviated form because R Sundaram seems too short and the full form of R Sundaram seems too long. So, so I found a via media of uh, Rama Sundar, and uh, I'm happy. I'm, I'm very happy. Uh, like I, I've come here after 35 years, and yesterday I went to the uh, to the Bits library, uh, the new library, and I found that uh, there is a there is a heritage section, and all the back issues of uh, Cactus Flower were there. Uh, and that uh, that delighted me uh, no end because in a way that is a culmination of uh, what Cactus Flower set out to do which was to be a record of all the activities on the campus. Yeah, in that sense the idea of Cactus Flower being like a portal into their time in BITS has continued to this day so it's a true measure of BITS' heritage. So, sir, uh, if you could tell us, uh, could you explain to us about the story of how Cactus Flower began, uh, in the sense that how you decided to conceptualize the magazine in the first place, what you did to make sure that it was printed for the first time, the whole story? Uh, well, uh, I, I, was, I was also the Elias secretary. And uh, uh, what, what happened was that... Uh, I, for, for a couple of years, uh, we brought out a cyclostyled uh, a cyclostyle newsletter, uh, for lack of a better word. Okay, we brought out something which was I, I don't know whether whether you re, you still know what cyclostyling is, but it was uh, a very old form of uh, uh, let us say uh, reproduction. Okay, I mean this was even before Xerox. So we used to cyclostyle these sheets, and uh, we were bringing out this newsletter, which was which was typically it used to be about six to about eight pages long, uh, for every for each semester, and then and then I realized that oh well actually what happens is that after the after the semester was I wouldn't even say the semester was over, as soon as the week was over. Uh, the the newsletter, which incidentally was called uh, the Camel Post, uh, went into the dustbin. So, uh, in a way, it was a little unfortunate. I mean, it was seeing all that effort of, uh, I would say it was, uh, the Camel Post was like a diary of what were the things which were happening on campus. Okay, it was like, Okay, there was this musical show, there was these skits, there was the drama club, there was the Elias activity, and there was a little bit of creative writing. So, so what happened was, it was all that was going into the dustbin in about a week. And uh, at, at that time, you know, the, the, so, so, so what happened was that I think I saw, I, I saw a yearbook of one of the American schools. Okay, American high schools, and over there there was everybody's photo and a brief description of this person, what he was famous for, as far as uh, school was concerned, and what he hoped to do after high school. Okay, so so what what we what I said was okay, and and you know American yearbooks they're called they're treasured, they're kept after they're they're kept after five decades. Okay. After five decades, you know, when the 50th reunion comes, this thing. So, so I said, well, what we need to do, what we need to do, we need to have something which would, uh, 
which would have a lot of photographs uh, which would record life and deaths, okay? Uh, a record of, okay, these were the activities that took place. Uh, the, what was this year's OSS like? What was this year's uh, extracurricular activities like? And then there was a creative section also. So we, we so, so I visualized this and uh, that's when, uh, that's when, uh, you know, uh, I realized that, okay, uh, uh, there, there were people who bought into the vision and then there were enough people who said, oh, you know, this can't be done. So we just went about doing it. So uh, what are the challenges that you faced with uh, getting the first CFO? Actually, uh, to, to backtrack a little bit, uh, the, you know, the cyclostyle uh, printing, the press newsletter. that you had, newsletter that you had, uh, this was in conjunction with the regular newsletter that uh, like the English Press Club used to have? There was no English Press Club. Ah, so the English Press Club uh, was essentially formed after this. Yes, there, there was there was there was only Elas, right? And and under Elas, we were actually trying to uh, do a lot of activities, mm -hmm. okay? And and then and then of course you know there was the classic cat versus chum kind of dichotomy, all right? Okay. So all all the cats gravitated towards Elas, and all the chums went towards uh, the Hindi activities uh, society. Oh, I'm glad to say everybody's breaking up outside. <laughs> okay, so uh, could you expand cats? Like I presume it refers to the like South crowd. No, then? I, actually, uh, the cats were the cat is an acronym for the casual American teenager. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, <laughs> but but typically, but typically the cat was was someone you know who 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 wore jeans. Okay. Okay, and and he spoke with an American accent. Okay, because he he had already identified himself with back home. Right. Okay, which was in New York. Right. Okay. <laughs> so this was a cat. <laughs> okay. I mean, I mean, though he he probably had never been outside the confines of right. of Minamagam or or wherever in in Chennai. Hmm. Okay. So so this was a cat. Okay, and as opposed to a cat, were all these. You know, guys with surnames like Agarwal and Gupta and all that. Okay. Uh, yes. <laughs> who, who who had never been beyond the confines of Seeker or Chirava. Hmm. Okay. But somehow, <laughs> yeah. But somehow this thing. So so what I'm saying is this was the essential dichotomy. So then so then we ran Elas. I mean, you know, we I, I would say Elas was already there and then I took uh, when when I became sec secretary of Elas we 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 were quite successful, right. you know. Under the Elas umbrella, there were all kinds of things, but you know, it was a cat organization, mm -hmm. right? And and all the chomus, okay, they wanted their spot in the sun, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So they went, they came along, and then the HAS, mm -hmm. okay. I mean, even just look at that. It was Hindi Activity Society. Yeah, it was like like the the it was like <laughs> Bharat and India. Okay, <laughs> yeah. so so what they did was they had the HAS. I mean, I mean, listen, what I'm saying is not exactly true, but essentially this, uh, not exactly 100%, but this is what happened. The general narrative is this, yes. Yeah, so so I'm sure, I'm sure that this dichotomy still exists. It does, it's, it's, not, okay. it's not explicit, I mean, we don't say it the way you said it, but yeah. I mean, there is exactly. certainly, I would say, you know, like, there are some extent, I would say. It does exist. Yeah, it exists. There are strong echoes of the society that you're describing yeah. in the way which exists right now. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so th this was it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, what we did was, okay, I mean, uh, so, so, coming back, I mean, what was your question? You were asking? Yeah. So, oh. uh, what I asked, oh, yeah, the beginnings of EPC, uh, it was uh, after the uh, so the cactus flower actually predates uh, bits beat and uh, sandpaper yeah. and uh, like no, the fine print. print. Yeah. So which no, let me let me just correct you. Okay. okay, there was there was bits beat. Okay, okay, it was a newsletter. Okay, and it had become defunct. Okay, before the camel post came over. All right. Okay. 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 Then we had the camel post. Okay, 
and uh, I mean the Camel Post was a newsletter, mm -hmm. and and then and then you know I I wanted to move on, mm -hmm. you know to you could say greater things. Okay. okay. So I handed it over to somebody. Mm -hmm. And he changed the name to, it was called, the, it, it ran very briefly, it was called the Clock Tower Times. Okay. Okay. And then after the Clock Tower Times uh, came Sandpaper. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which uh, was after that. And then, and then, okay, after that, I... I yeah, I, after that, the fine print, it's now, been the fine is, print for quite a while now, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so, just so we have an idea of what that dichotomy was, could you also explain to us what the Chung crowd was? Yeah, the Chung crowd was the sort of guy who wore polyester pants, okay, uh, as opposed to jeans, okay. Uh, and, and, I mean, you know, uh, uh, when I say polyester pants, okay, you know, and it was sort of stitched by the tailor outside and you can mark it. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. uh, and and he he wore this uh, he wore this uh, polyester shirt, okay, mm -hmm. to match with the polyester pant, okay, and and I don't know if you remember there was this thing called safari suit, okay, uh, you have to see octopusy, you know, <laughs> okay, <laughs> it, no. it dates back a very long time, but but Roger Moore actually wears a safari suit throughout that film, not throughout. Okay, okay, but at some point, when yeah. he's in India, right, right, right. Okay, when he's in India, he wears a safari suit. Mm -hmm. So, so what my point is, okay, their idea of sophistication yes, was yeah. was to wear a safari suit. Yeah, right. Okay, and uh, so on. So, so you could say you could say that this was a deep dichotomy. Uh, even elections mm -hmm. were were, uh, I would say, split mm -hmm. along these lines. Okay, on campus in those days. Okay. And I would even say across the country today. Of course, okay. yeah. Right. So, so one one could go on endlessly. Okay, but I think let's move on with the yeah yeah. Let's let's, let's get back so, to cactus. Uh, we were talking a little bit about this outside, but you were explaining the changes that you saw in campus. Can you can you mention a bit of those? Uh, how it didn't change for a very long time till about two thousand five is what you claimed, and then after that it's been a ma massive change on campus. Yeah. I, I think I think a lot of it a lot of it has to I, I think uh, uh, okay for example for example uh, when you look at you, you know what what I see what I see over here is that uh, I had the opportunity to come back in about two thousand five okay and then I came and I saw so between the time that I graduated in eighty three to 2005, there wasn't much change. Okay, it was it was not unlike Jurassic Park. Okay, I mean you just sort of come back and then you know everything is everything is unchanged. And and I remember uh, thinking to myself, oh my gosh, this isn't this isn't a good thing. Hmm. Uh, because if you look at anything, if if you look at anything, if you change a little bit every year, hmm. okay, in 20 years there's a massive amount of change. Yeah, of yes. course. But if you look, if you if you look at any sort of uh, uh, system, and there's absolutely no change over twenty years, it means that it's gone into stasis. So I came and I had a look, and the books hadn't changed, the pedagogy method hadn't changed. Okay, so that's why I called it Jurassic Park. But when you and and, and okay, so this was two thousand five. So I'm coming roughly about 15 years later, and I'm absolutely astonished at uh, the the uh, extent of change. What it seems to me is like uh, they've stepped on the gas. Uh, when I say they, mm. okay, I, I mean uh, the founding family, okay, has stepped on the gas, uh, almost as if it is to wake, make up for make up for lost time. Uh, yeah. When you came back in 2005, did you happen to? Uh, and get to know how cactus law itself had changed in the time that had elapsed. Uh, I, uh, you know, I, I, I did. I, I recollect. Uh, I, I recollect uh, meeting with uh, the the then person who was who was having a look at cact whoever was in charge of cactus law, and and I was all I could say was I was a little disappointed. 
Okay. Mm. I, I mean, it was it was like not just cactus flower and bits. The right. whole system was in stasis. Right. Okay. It was. It, it hadn't. It hadn't moved. It hadn't changed since uh, since then. Mm. And now I'm absolutely. I mean, you know, now I find that things have changed enormously. So um, yes, speaking of change itself. So in the thirty five years since your your batch. Cactus flower itself has, so I can see that in your edition, it used to be more about literary interpretations of what was happening on campus versus right now, Cactus flower is more about creative stories or poetry and the like being getting, these are the things that are typically getting getting featured in Cactus flower. So do you, do you have something to say for this change and do you maybe have a direction that you wish Cactus flower should have gone in instead? Uh, I I think I think that uh, if you and and uh, if you look at the very first issue of Cactus Flower, right? I I think I think that that template uh, was perhaps uh, was perhaps uh, uh, was perhaps the right one hmm. because if you think if if you see uh, if you read it carefully, okay, the first see what used to happen was. What used to happen was that oh, uh, everybody. I mean, you know, you used to have these. Uh, you used to have these class photos, mm -hmm. and the class photos were organized by the discipline that they went to. So all the Tripoli guys went together, and then the Met guys went together. Okay, and it was distributed to maybe 30, 40 of of uh, whoever was was that particular discipline, mm -hmm. and 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 what. But but you know that's not the way hostel life was, okay? Because hostel life, you were really a deck of shuffled cards, okay? Yeah. So so you you are the, uh, I mean I mean by and large the Tripoli guys sat with the, uh, sat with the Meg guys who sat with the other engineering who sat with the Lisbon, okay? Mm -hmm. So so what we tried to do in that first issue of Cactus Flower and and. What we were saying is that, okay, you know, what we are going to do is we are going to take the photographs. We take the photographs, okay, and we'll have someone from that discipline write about what was their experience over the last uh, few years that they do it, that they did it because they were just graduating, okay. Uh, and and this was also controversial, okay, okay, because because the the departmental heads. You know, they wanted to control, you know, that everybody was going to come, okay, and everybody was going to be nicely buttoned up because this was going to be an official photo. Right. And here we were saying, look, man, you come whatever way you want. So so what actually happened was there, there were a few people who weren't even sure whether the photo photography, whether the photo session was going to take place or not. Okay. <laughs> and bad luck, okay? I mean, they lost out. <laughs> they uh, lost out on a piece of history. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they lost out. Okay. Which, so, which what, you were, what you were going for at the time was an accurate depiction of Bitsians. Yeah, so, so just, just to clarify, like right now, it's not like Cactus Flower is exclusively creative writing or poetry. We do, we still maintain, you know, like uh, about half of Cactus Flower is still a section called Pilani Diaries in which we recount uh, every single. Uh, important event that has occurred on campus, be it, you know, Wasam Oasis, Apogee, or Music Night, like other, other extracurricular activities like Rag Malika and other things like that. Um, but uh, certainly like looking at your campus, I believe there was a considerable emphasis that was put on campus life as compared to the creative writing part, I suppose. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 think, I, I think what we wanted it to be was a record or what had happened during that uh, yeah. during that year? Mm. All, all right, and and because you, you know what happens, okay. And uh, as, as the editor, the hardest thing is you know there are all these guys who say, "Oh, I have written the best poetry since yeah uh, since this guy, or I have written <laughs> the best short story since uh, since." Uh, oh, you know, uh, okay, <laughs> alright. Or I have written the greatest lyrics since this particular person. Okay, and then you have a look at it. Okay, and and it's complete crock of uh, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So 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 I think the thing is, how do you say no? 
okay, to all these self-appointed geniuses. Right. Because, because really, really, it doesn't fit into the overall scheme of things. Right. Okay, all that we want to do, I mean, you know, if, if you look at it, okay, the creative section in the first issue of Cactus Fly is almost a filler. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I mean, we, we've just, okay, I mean, what we wanted to do was, okay, there are four sections on that. One was of A's and D's, which is like everybody's photograph, okay. Second thing is a general roundup of whatever happened on the campus, mm -hmm. okay. The third thing was, it was a lampoon section, okay, where we wanted to just sort of poke fun at all things uh, which are uniquely witsy. Right. All right. And, and then, okay, we had a few pages left over. So, <laughs> might as well fill it with something. Yes, yeah. yes exactly. <laughs> okay. So, so that's, that's what we did. Okay. And, and uh, uh, the other thing which you, which uh, I don't know if you noticed about the first issue of Cactus Flower, mm. is there were quite a few advertisements in, right. at, in that at the end. Mm. Okay. Uh, and and the reason for that was okay. And the reason for that was uh, no. Actually, it ends with bits blues. Uh, I mean, this one that you have. And after that, okay, there were about 25, 25 pages of advertisements. Just ads. Okay, they were, they were just ads. Hmm. Okay, and and you see, it was it was very simple. By the time cactus flower was conceptualized and we we got it into action. Hmm. Okay, the the uh, you know the budgeting, everything was already in place. Okay, and they said that I mean you know uh, there's no money for this. Hmm. Okay, so okay, what we said is okay, we have uh, we have some <coughs> fairly large number of students hmm. uh, on campus. Some of them were very well heat. Okay, and and what sort of budding entrepreneurs are we? Okay, if we can't go out and raise a piddly amount of, uh, I think I think our budget was eighty thousand rupees. Okay, uh, that is a lot for eighty three, I'd say. Yeah, it it was it was a lot of money. Okay, uh, but but believe it or not, okay, and and, and you know it, the it was like it was like uh, we were already you know you know the second semester had already started. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, we we were into February, and we were still in a go no go kind of a situation. <laughs> like you still didn't know whether this was actually gonna go to. Play. Yeah. Okay. And and then what happened was okay. All the appeals that we had made. Okay. Suddenly there was a flurry of uh, checks which uh, came in, and then and then okay, it was go. Mm -hmm. So we knew that we were going. Okay. Uh, we knew that the the we had we had maybe about. Uh, 25 or 30,000 rupees, mm. okay, and uh, okay, where was the rest of the money going to come from, mm. okay, and and that's when, that's when you are an entrepreneur, mm. okay, you you got to have faith, okay, okay, so we went out and hustled and, and uh, did all kinds of other stuff, okay, and uh, I think, I think we were, we were fortunate, we got the money, Okay, there, there was very, I, if I remember correctly, there was even a surplus by the time we finished. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it was a surplus. So, so much later, when the government of India talked about boot and, you know, this build, operate, transfer kind of models, mm -hmm. okay, I said, man, they should have come and asked us. <laughs> <laughs> they should have come and asked us about it. You have put you guys up a lot earlier. <laughs> So, so what happened was, okay, and then, okay, now we have the money, okay. Uh, so, what, what's the next step? Okay. Getting people to work on the whole thing, right? Oh, no, there were lots of people ready to work on it, hmm. okay. I mean, there were lots of people ready to write. Right. Okay, and write poetry, okay. Nothing against poetry, <laughs> I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, right, yeah. I, I mean, you know, nothing nothing against poetry, but someone had to do Editing. the, the nitty-gritty work of, uh, you know, uh, I, I mean, if you look at that process, okay, uh, it, you got to make what are called zinc blocks. Okay. You know, the, you, you have the photograph and that photograph has to be converted into a zinc block. And then you have to do photo type setting. Right, right. The printing. <coughs> yeah. So just to be clear, you guys did all of this on your own. The photography, the zinc blotting, the printing. Yes. 
Well, you read the by hand. No, no. Let, let me explain. Okay, the way it worked was the, the, there was this. The, we did the photography ourselves. Right. When I say ourselves, yeah, okay, there was someone in charge of photography. Yeah, right. yeah. And then uh, the zinc blocks, hmm. converting the photographs into zinc blocks, had to be uh, was done in Delhi. Right. It right, wasn't. Right. It wasn't available here. Hmm. So what we used to do was okay. So so you know. Uh, uh, someone went from here with the photographs to Delhi. Hmm. Okay, got the zinc blocks made and brought it back. Hmm. Okay, and just outside the campus, hmm. okay, there was there was a uh, there was a old treadle press. Hmm. Okay, I mean there was one inside the campus also, but there were different reasons. We went outside the campus for for this old treadle press, hmm. and there was this process called photocomposition. Okay. So what would happen is, and, and he had a limited amount of typeface. Hmm. He had just enough typeface for maybe about one and a half pages. All right. So what you had to do was, okay, so for example, he would, he, let's say, uh, let's say he, the first page, okay, I, I'm talking about the page with, with, the, with the guys, mm -hmm. okay, of A's and B's, hmm. okay, he'd, he'd compose that. Okay, mm -hmm. then you get that printed. Okay, and then you store that paper safely. Mm -hmm. Okay, the printed paper. And then he has to do the next page. Mm -hmm. Okay, now over there, two things would happen is when the actual photo composition took place, mm -hmm. uh, maybe the text was was much larger than what uh, the the intended size was. The, yeah. Okay. So that would happen, or the text wasn't enough, okay? Mm -hmm. So at that point in time, you had to think of a limerick or a joke or something. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like wrote that at, on the spot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, you need to fill in the gaps. Yeah, so, so, so you know, you know you, you, we did all that, okay? I mean, I mean if this, so, so let me just ask you, how does all this sound to you? This sounds very different from the process that we have to go through right now. We simply compile a digital copyright now and send it to print. None of the integrity is managed by us. Okay, there's there's someone there's someone here, for example, who helped me a lot with this process. Okay. You know, Professor Rajiv Gupta of the civil engineering department. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So so uh, uh, he he helped me a lot. Hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, and 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 this is what what used to happen was. Okay, we used to have we, we used to have people sitting at the printing press. Hmm. Okay, uh, because because uh, the the printer could print best when he was thoroughly liquored up. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what used to so what used to happen was like uh, you know he'd finish dinner, he would pour a quarter of alcohol within himself. Hmm. Okay, and then he'd start. <laughs> right. So so we needed. So, you know, we, we had a gang of volunteers, okay, one person, okay, for different days. And and invariably what would happen is, like, I'd, I'd I mean, you know, I would say, uh, I, I was going to say I'd get a call, and then I remembered, okay, in those days there, there was, was no mobile, yeah. there, was no <laughs> there, were, there weren't even regular phones. Yeah. So, what used to happen was, like, okay, after some time I got into the habit, okay, at about 11.30, that was around the time I knew that the crisis would erupt hmm. in the press. So I would I would sort of go down to the press hmm. and say, okay, what's what's the situation? Hmm. Are we up or are we down? Hmm. Up meaning do we have excess material and something has to be cut out or do we have less material and a filler has to be put in? Hmm. Okay, so, so, so that's how it all came. The pages were all printed separately hmm. at different times. And and then one fine day, okay, they were all done, and then it was it was put together, and and that's how the first issue of Cactus War came out. Wow. So uh, coming back to the photographs that you mentioned earlier, uh, you said that the departmental heads wanted people to be all uptight and well dressed. By departmental heads, do you refer to the heads of the academic departments, or are you referring to the heads of the organizing departments? Uh, no, I mean, if you see the the photographs were taken by when I say department uh, by by discipline, yeah, discipline, by branch yeah. discipline. Yeah. So I'm just okay. looking at your cactus flower now, and I see these two cars listed. 
there's press and correspondence, art and decor, control, stage controls. These have all evolved into the departments we have today. Can you talk a little bit about uh, department culture in at that time? Uh, by department, you mean the disciplinary department? No, uh, not no. Uh, these departments. So controls and stage controls, things like that. Uh, okay, I I think I'm not the right person. Okay. okay, because because you see what happened was I was I was the last secretary. Right. Okay, and and uh, we had a running battle. I mean, the last secretary, you know, for lack of a better word, mm-hmm. it was like being a programming head. Okay. okay. I mean, we would decide. Okay. We are going to have quiz, we are going to have dumb charades, we are going to have this thing, okay, and this is going to amount to so many hours, okay, hmm. and we need to have so much time and so on, okay, so so effectively, uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I didn't interact very much except with the planning stuka, hmm. okay, so I, I can't, I have no comments about that. So, uh, as a club, uh, what all the events that ELAS organize? So, currently, ELAS is like primarily responsible for organizing the quizzes which occur, uh, you know, on campus during the fest, outside the fest, fest and semesters, and a few events such as uh, word stock and you know uh, speed scrabble uh, events like those. Uh, so, I'm curious to know, like, you know, uh, I'm ELAS has definitely changed quite a bit uh, over the years. What was ELAS like back in your days? Oh, uh, uh, I, I, I think, I think, uh, I, I mean, th- this is the same thing. This is the same. Uh, I, I don't think if, if that's what you're describing, that's precisely what Elas did. Oh, so, e- excellent. Thank okay. You. So, so for example, uh, well, well, let me share with you the story of how I became became the secretary of Elas. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so, so I was. I was in my first year, hmm. okay, and and you know the uh, uh, notice came around that they're organizing the Brain of Bits competition. So do they do they still have? They the still have. Yes. Yeah, okay. we have a winner here. Yeah, um, yeah, I was uh, the Brain of Bits like uh, in my third year. Very good. Yeah. So so pleased to meet you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so what happened was like I I went along and and I I put in my name. And everybody said, "Oh, you know, like uh, uh, you know, when there are when there are such Maharathis, heroes, mm-hmm. okay, who have spent seven years, eight years uh, on campus." Uh, but but you know, I said, uh, "If you don't mind, I'd like to try my own hand at, at the game." So I qualified for the semi-finals. I mean, you know, there used to be a written test. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then I qualified. Okay, and then I qualified for the finals. Okay, and before I knew what had happened was okay, I won the brain of bits in my first year. Right. <laughs> okay, I, I I've heard it had a very dramatic ending. Like I've heard I I like so uh, I heard that like it went down to like the last few questions or so uh, for like the time that you won Bob. If it's the same, one. we we call the event Bob right now as an abbreviation. Brain yeah, of bits. Yeah. Was, yeah. Yes. Yes. It. 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 It it went down to the wire. Right. Okay. And and I I, I mean, you know, I was actually lagging. Hmm. Okay. And and the last three questions hmm. I got on the rebump. Hmm. You know, it it was it was it was one of those humdingers. Okay. Hmm. Uh, you know, it was a classic gunfight at the OK Corral kind of a, a, this thing, where the questions which came to me hmm. for some reason I was unable to answer. Hmm. Okay. And then and then the questions which were on the rebound, okay, I was able to answer. Hmm. I, I guess I guess it was just my day when I look back at it. Okay. Right. And and what had happened was because I won it in my first year, hmm. I, I I don't know, but but of course, you know, uh, so the brain of bits rules were changed that once you won the brain of bits, hmm. you faded into oblivion, sort of. You you went up into the uh, Olympics heroes kind of uh, <laughs> yeah. this thing. So the idea being, I mean, you don't compete again. Okay. Yeah, of course. So before this, these rules didn't exist because no one had won the brain of bits in the first year. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? <laughs> the fair reason. You know, fair reason. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because the, the 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 typical profile of someone who won the brain of bits 
was a sort of a Vela character, okay, who was in his fifth year or sixth year or seventh year. <laughs> he was not wrong. <laughs> who, who spent a lot of time reading the newspaper, okay. I mean, that's how you won the brain of bits, okay. So, so here was someone who came and sort of broke all the rules, okay. <laughs> So, so that's uh, this. So, what happened was that okay. Uh, uh, so then I I became I became joint secretary. Then I was secretary of of uh, of Elas. Hmm. And and uh, what at that point in time what happened was that uh, Elas uh, got into. Uh, I mean, one was of course the the kind of Oasis programming activities. Hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, and and then uh, in the second semester, hmm. uh, we we used to do a lot of uh, other kinds of uh, let us say the same sex sort of thing. Oasis, you had a quiz in the second semester. You had a brain of bits, right, right, uh, right, right, and and so on. Okay, uh, and and there were there were what we were always trying to do was trying to do variations hmm. well, because you know there's a limit. Okay, now for example, I I've forgotten that, but I remember we we came up with something which was a cross between a crossword and Scrabble. Okay. I mean it was uh, the same, hmm. and it was a very popular game at that time. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, it was a significant innovation. So <clears throat> what we did was we went along. Okay, so so that's how it was. Okay, and then Elias made this major push into publishing. Okay, hmm. or I would say magazines and so on. So, right. so that is what I realized that there was there wasn't a proper magazine which recorded what bits in life was about. Hmm. So I ran the Camel Post, which was a broadsheet, okay, six or eight pages long. Okay. Hmm. And uh, then after I finished as a last secretary, uh, I I tried I, I said no, we need to have something like this. Hmm. And that is how Cactus Flower, Cactus Flower came about. Uh, speaking of your time, the bits in life, uh, were festivals uh, as big a deal in your days as they are right now? Were they, I mean, we, we see people today seem to describe Oasis of the 80s as something that was something to behold. So, uh, let, let me put it this way, that the, the, competition in terms of mind space mm. was far less. Okay, I mean, today you have internet. Today you course, have, yeah. I mean, I mean, you have a plethora of mm. TV shows. I mean, even even uh, speaking of myself, quite often there are there are times when I'm absolutely glued to the, the, the TV shows because of the sheer quality mm. of, of uh, the shows. Okay, mm. there was nothing there, there were no telephones even remember in those days. Of course. Okay. Yeah. So so Oasis for, for some people, okay, Oasis was the absolute cornerstone. Okay. Uh, I, I mean there were two ways you excelled at bits. Mm. Okay, one is okay, you got nine point nine, mm. okay, uh, as your as your CG, mm. okay, which a lot of people didn't manage. Right. Okay. Uh, and and if you think about and if you think about it, okay, and the other way was you uh, okay you you found your own niche, uh, whether whether it was through uh, uh, some sort of creative activity, and and Oasis allowed you to to showcase that particular uh, that particular whatever you were good at. So okay. what? What were the like big events in Oasis? Uh, so currently, uh, Oasis is you know predominantly known for professional shows by yeah. people like you know Amit Trivedi or Sonidhi Chauhan etc. But uh, back in those days, uh, what were like the you know uh, kernel events? I suppose they're called in Oasis. The one that you know drew a huge crowd. In. Did they used to have a uh, blab? Uh, they used to have jam. They so they currently have like jams in the audio which they call blab. Okay. Uh, yeah. So so you see there are certain things which can't change. Right. Okay. So yes, there were professional shows. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I mean I mean uh, obviously there were professional shows. Okay. <laughs> the only thing is okay uh, today you have whoever is popular. Yeah. Okay. In those days it was whoever was popular about three decades back. <laughs> 
Okay. Yeah. Uh, what I what I remember hmm. was uh, yes. Okay. I, I mean, remember one thing. I think bits uh, prides itself on its, uh, for lack of a better word, on its intellectualism. Hmm. Okay. Yes. So hmm. so the quiz was a big draw. Hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, now. Okay, now because I was the organizer of the quiz, hmm. uh, I I couldn't participate in the quiz till my till my final year. Oh, you weren't allowed to. Oh, so when you organize the quiz, does it mean that you set the quizzes as well? Yes. Oh, yes. okay, fine, fine. Yeah, makes sense. So so because I was setting the questions, hmm. okay, I I couldn't organ I I couldn't participate in the quiz, and then it wasn't until the final my final year that I actually I represented bits. Hmm. Okay, and, and I mean, when I say there, there was my partner and I, mm. and, and that was another humdinger of a competition because four very big, four of the best colleges in India, mm. and we were in the final, okay? And as usual, as usual, okay, uh, we were lagging behind, okay? <laughs> okay? We, we missed every single direct question, got our points on the rebound, okay? And I think I think we went into the final round, hmm. okay, where it was like 17, 18, 17, and 16. Hmm. And bits wow. were 16. Okay. You know, it was the classic photo finish. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. And and as usual, again we missed our question. Okay. And then we got the other three questions right. Okay. <laughs> you, you really like the plot twist ending <laughs> quizzes. <laughs> yeah. What so, what colleges were these? That you were up against? Uh, I think IIT Delhi, St. Stephen's, uh, Wits, and probably Hindu College. That is a tough crowd. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was very good. Okay, mm -hmm. and and well, so 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 the quiz attracted a lot of crowd. Right. Okay. Uh, just a minute. Yeah. Just jam. Yes. Sorry, that is the jam. Yeah. Just a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just a minute attracted uh, a, a very good crowd, and then. My joint secretary mm. in Elias was, was someone called Harish Bhatt, mm. okay, who also could not participate because Chandra, he, was, he, was, he was one of the organizers. Okay? And if you don't know who Harish Bhatt is, okay, today he's a director of Tata Sons. Okay? Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> he's, like, he's like big time. Okay? Right. So, so, I mean, he was an excellent, uh, excellent extemporary speaker. Mm. So, uh, yes, he is it. So so yeah so these used to be the these used Bates. to be the these used to be the big events hmm. okay uh -huh. and and then you know they had they had uh, they had dancing competitions and mm -hmm. this and that but yeah we are bits who cares who dances you know what <laughs> strong agree <laughs> I I agree yes. I am on board with that <laughs> exactly <laughs> might be a controversial opinion uh, right now but yeah strong yeah, agree I don't think that's the way it is anymore. <laughs> You know what, but yeah. So no, from 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 what it seems like, Oasis was largely the same thing as it is today. Uh, today we have these dance events, we have big drawers like quizzes, we have big events. In your time, I'm guessing people like Usha Uthuk, Lata Mangeshkar, and Asha Bhosle were the key performers. Uh, Usha Uthuk, I think yes. Hemant Kumar came, of course. Yeah. Okay, Hemant Kumar came, and and of course, I mean, Lata Mangeshkar was probably too big. Hmm. Okay, for us. <laughs> But but yeah, okay. I mean I mean these were the sort of people who used to who who used to come for Oasis. Did you used to get the time to attend these shows? What with being busy with organizing all these things in Oasis? Uh, you know, I I think I think that's uh, uh you, you know that's a question of how you set your priorities. Yeah, exactly. Like, all right. Hmm. So 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 okay. So so let me tell you, I I had a very good CGPA. Hmm. Okay, I, when I say very good, fairly good. Hmm. Okay, <laughs> but but what what happened was like I I mean obviously you had to devote time to things that you felt were important. Hmm. So I used to prioritize. I used to tell myself, man, okay, this semester, okay, it's it's fine. Okay, I don't like these courses. Hmm. Okay, I I'm not going to do well. Okay, hmm. and and remember in the bits bulletin. Okay, I don't know if they still have that line. They say all grades are acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I used to say, okay, what I'm going to do? These mm -hmm. are the couple of courses I I don't mind getting easy in. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, I said, okay, 
to sort of balance that out, I will get A's in these couple of courses. Okay, and then somewhere over there, I would say, okay, I hope I'll get a C or a B, <coughs> and and somehow sort of balance out balance out my CGPA. So my CGPA, my 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 grades in the first semester when Oasis was, I used to be like this. Mm. Okay, and then I would sort of compensate in the second semester, and so on. So it was it was I would say. Uh, I, I I mean it was just time management, right, right. setting your setting your priorities, okay, and uh, my my advice my advice to lots of people, hmm. okay, because because what happens is you know uh, uh, what happens is that people come here with, for lack of a better word, you know, with great expectations, hmm. and what I mean by great expectations. You know, this is like, and and uh, okay, uh, we we'll, we'll come to that. I don't know how many of you know that I've written a book. Whoa, okay, 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 which also talks about life and bits uh, about you know. What, the, could you tell us the title of the book, please? It's called Let It Be. Okay, is it this named after the song? Uh, <laughs> No, uh, not not really. Okay, it's it's. Uh, I don't know if you remember. Okay, there was a classic Hindi movie called Jaane Bhi Do Yaro. Yeah. All right. <laughs> course, so yeah. let it be is the literal translation right. of of, of uh, that. That's okay. the cat version of Jaane Bhi Do Yaro. Yeah. So, yeah. So so what so so what happens? So I would call it okay the the great uh, middle class insecurity syndrome. Hmm. Okay. Uh, and and you know it was very evident at this at this uh, interaction at the student application uh, with the students yesterday. Uh, you know people will say, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to give you guys? Are talking that you had four great years in bits. Okay, uh, I've already done three years and I haven't yet seen the light. Mm. So, <laughs> <laughs> so so can you uh, can you? Can you tell us when are you going to see this? Okay, mm. hey man. Okay, I mean, I mean, I mean, what's the bits intake today? What about in in a year? Uh, it's about thousand thousand two hundred, I think. Okay, I mean, it means okay, you have been handpicked mm. out of thousand, out of out of, I don't know, quite a lot of applicants. Mm. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So so listen. Okay, so what I'm saying is, all of you, when the time comes, hmm. okay, give it time. Okay, when the time comes, okay, and this is this is really meant for all the guys who are who are going to listen to this podcast. Hmm. When the time comes, all of you are going to become, uh, if if you're going to remain professional, you're all going to become CEOs of very big companies, hmm. or you're going to become entrepreneurs. Okay, and hopefully you'll all become very successful entrepreneurs. Okay, so so don't I mean you know you must shed all your middle class middle class thought baggage. Right. Okay, just leave it behind. Okay, and and just do what you what you enjoy uh, doing the most, whatever you're good at. Okay, and okay my my parents. Okay, so let me let you on to something. Hmm. My, I mean, OSS semester used to go, and then my report card used to reach home. Right. And I remember my parents used to look at me and say, "Where are you going to go with these sort of grades?" Right. Okay. And and okay. All I'm saying is, I think I, it worked out fine. Yeah. 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 I, I did. I did fairly all right. Yeah. Definitely. We've all been there. Yeah. Yeah. So so don't don't let don't let. Uh, Little things like uh, CG uh, uh, bother you. Hmm. Okay, just go out and do your own thing, man. Do you have um, specific memories of the academics at that time? Anything you remember? Any instances? Uh, no, I think I I, I think there, there were there were there were some. Um, uh, uh, okay, well, I, I, let me let me. I, I mean. Let me just put it this way: I was different. Okay. Okay. I felt uh, I didn't. I felt that I didn't learn enough from academics, hmm. from the academicians who were teaching. Hmm. So, 
I, I, I felt, and you know, this is, you can say, the ignorance of youth, mm. okay? I was a know-it-all. I knew it much better than they did. Mm. So what I used to do was, I used to go with whatever I wanted in the library, okay? And my advice to anybody is, don't do that, mm. okay? Uh, don't do that, because it is just an uh, indication of how big your ego is, mm. okay? So, so what you should really do, I mean, and besides, besides you're spending a lot of money on tuition. If somebody is there to teach you, might you will, well yes, might as well learn. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you're going to go to the library, it should be uh, to extend the knowledge that you learn. So, so to answer your question, okay, I think at that time the teachers, there were, there were reasons for that. Okay. Uh, the, the, uh, the bits... In, in the 70s that I uh, that, that I experienced, which I now understand very clearly, was actually under a serious funds crunch. Okay. Yeah. Uh, because what happened was that after I graduated, I spent a small period of time as as, as a teaching assistant. Mm. Okay. And uh, 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 you know, uh, w w well, basically, uh, bids were not paying market related rates. Mm -hmm. at that period of time. I, I was there here only for a semester. But, uh, bit, and, and that was basically, I was just sorting myself out. So, you know, before leaving the warm cocoon mm -hmm. of this, yeah. where you had spent five years, I said, okay, you know, let me, let me just sort, sort of, uh, f sort myself out and then, and then, uh, this thing. Mm -hmm. So, 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 Bits was facing a funds crunch. It wasn't doing well. And I think what has happened is that now under the uh, under the new uh, leadership, mm. okay, uh, so you you can actually see that the money is flowing in in terms of facilities, in terms of faculty and things like that. So I right. I think it's it's much better now. Uh, the family have realized that they have a jewel, and uh, the jewel should always remain polished. Yeah. It does well to pay attention to what we have. Um, so, uh, yeah, Apogee did not exist uh, in your time. No, uh, ours was the first year that Apogee uh, was uh, was uh, this thing. I mean, my ours was, I think, I think it was in uh, eighty two. Okay. Okay. So your third year. Third or fourth year. Mm -hmm. Ours was ours was pretty mixed because we were actually a four and a half year batch. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, okay, because because we were the first batch out of plus two, and then we had some crossover, superstructure, all sorts of hmm. bits, bits sort of jargon. Okay, mm -hmm. which only if you've been through the bit system, hmm. okay, uh, you you understand. So so apogee was there, and I think it was interesting. Okay, because you asked me about Stuka. I, you know, it sort of relates to the fact that bits wasn't part of the mainstream. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, it was it was off to one side. It was in Pilani. Okay, uh, I mean today location is not a barrier, mm -hmm. but in those days you had to get into Haryana Roadways bus from ISBT. Okay, and brave the journey. Mm -hmm. It's still a barrier, probably it's not as bad as it was in the seventies, but we do face issues. Colleges refusing to come because of transport and things like that. Yeah, yeah. So, so, I, and and remember one thing. Okay, uh, we actually went through a phase. Uh, I, you, you, you know, there was this, uh, there was this guy called George Fernandez who was a big wheel in the government. Mm -hmm. Okay, he was a trade union leader, and he was making noises that Pilani is the biggest Jagirda uh, still remaining in in India. And he, he, uh, he, uh, I think he made statements saying that we should nationalize bits. Okay. Okay. So, so, so what, what you have to do is you have to see this in the back, larger backdrop of history. Mm. Uh, till the 50s, bits led the country in terms of technical education. Mm. Okay. And for that, you have to go to the heritage section, okay, read up, okay, what exactly was G.D. Birla's vision of bits, okay. There, there's, for example, there's this academician at MIT named Ross Bassett, mm. okay, who has, who, with whom I've had a correspondence, okay. 
he actually spent a lot of time researching that. Okay. Mm. Uh, and G.D. Birla had this very clear vision that BITS was going to lead the country in terms of technical education. Okay. And, and uh, he was talking with MIT, okay, as early as, I mean, as early as 1948. And, and we were getting professors over from MIT. Okay. This was, remember that this was at a time when the leading engineering colleges in India were what you call the Presidency Engineering Colleges. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Jadavpur so, University in the right, right? Uh, so you were talking about what is, you, you know, what is now Anna, Anna University yeah. in, in yeah. Madras, mm. uh, the College of Engineering at Pune, okay, and and uh, the the Engineering College in, in Chennai, in, in Calcutta, sorry. So, and, and you were talking about Roorkee, okay. So if you look at it, these were colleges which were designed to produce, if you like, draftsmen who could work with for the railways, who could work for putting up civil engineering buildings and this and that and so on. Right, right. And and G D Birla had already envisioned that no, we are going to. I mean, when independence comes, we are going to need a lot of technical people and commercially oriented people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, of course. So. So what happened? So so you know, and here he was, G. D. Birla, okay, and and you're seeing all this in Bilani is the creation in in bits is the creation of this one man, okay, but what happened was I think I mean this was around after independence the IITs were being set up, the first IIT was being set up in Kharagpur, okay, and remember this was government funding, okay, and money was just poured into the IITs. Right, right. Okay. Government money. And and remember, the IITs were also having foreign collaboration. Mm. Okay. So 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 for lack of a better word, okay, foreign collaboration. So the Americans took Hawaii. Okay. The Soviets, the Soviet Union took Kanpur. Mm. Okay. The, Germ <laughs> the Germans took the Germans took uh, uh, Chennai. 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 Okay. okay. The, the Brits took IIT Delhi. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so you know, that that is the reason. That is the reason. I, I don't know how many of you are aware of that. That's the reason that IIT Kanpur, mm -hmm. okay, is very good at computer science. Okay. Because the Soviets were the best mathematicians. Mm -hmm. And they were the best computer programmers. And they had to be very good at computer programming mm -hmm. to overcome the limitations because they didn't have access to the ICs. Which the Americans did, okay. So they were they were they were like that, okay, and and so on, okay, and 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 when countries were pouring money into uh, the IITs, right. okay, how was uh, how was Babuji, the G D Birla, yeah, okay, how was he going to do that, okay? So so that's that's effectively that's effectively what happened. That's where bits uh, sort of fell back. Mm. For lack of a better word, I mean, you know, bits in its own way was a victim of the Cold War. Yeah. So, speaking of uh, campus life, do you have any anecdotes that you would like to share? Uh, how were the yeah. eateries back then? Because eateries are always a hangout spots. Uh, what did you guys have? Oh well, uh, today morning I went to Connaught. I'm mm. glad to see that Blue Moon is uh, still there. We went to Volga. Huh. Okay. Uh, Volga's so Volga has been there since then. Oh yeah, Blue Moon Volga. Okay, Ratan Reddy, Ratan Reddy is still there. Okay, mm. uh, so so you know there there's the more things change, okay, the more things remain the same. Yeah. So uh, I think uh, I think what you should. So so I I, I think uh, it's that. Uh, I I think campus life was was pretty rowdy in those days, um, and uh, but then it should be like that. Yeah, so, definitely agree. <laughs> yes, okay. I mean, I mean, wh what fun is it if you produced a whole out of thousand? Hmm. Okay, if you produced uh, nine hundred nine pointers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what What are the What are the poor guys who got who didn't get nine points? The hundred guys who didn't get nine points. So you really need to have a nice Gaussian distribution. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have in this room a nine pointer, by the way. This guy. Very good. Yeah, pleased to make pleased to make your acquaintance. Yeah.
so just to give this thing closure what hostels were you in throughout your four years uh well the, my first two years i spent in kg okay and then i moved to vyas hmm. okay and uh, uh okay so you asked you asked about uh, you asked about campus life so what used to happen was like i was in vyas you know in the new wing overlooking overlooking the uh, the road to Connaught. Hmm. Okay. okay. So so there was this there was this uh, sidey of mine. Okay. Okay. Who made it a point? You, you know when the girls from Balika Vidya Peet used to walk by. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so he he made it a point. He would always appear on the balcony with just a towel around his middle. Oh God. <laughs> okay. I am not sure if that's legal. <laughs> all right. <laughs> And and uh, yeah, so so then then the girls went and complained, okay, uh, about about yeah. Actually, actually, it was it was if you like, for lack of a better word, it was a perversion. Mm-hmm. Okay, the girls went and complained. Okay, the chief warden came along and had a quiet chat with my uh, sidey. Okay, and I hope uh, then, that. Then, <laughs> then then you know he stopped he stopped his uh, his. Uh, Conveniently turning up with a towel in the <laughs> yeah. balcony, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and 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 that, that's what, and it used to be completely open, hmm. you know. I mean, I mean, it, the, it, there was nothing between uh, the road and uh, the bhavan. Hmm. Yeah. So, so as far as he was concerned, I mean, you know, he tried to justify, you know, I'm just going to the bathroom. You know, At this point of time, every time. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Uh. So okay. Yeah. Fine. Yeah. Just like uh. Just for you know, I just wanted to ask, what like, are there any other like controversies that you would like to share that happened on your time during campus? I'm sure there must have been quite a few, like you know, just anyone. L- l- listen. Okay. I. I mean. I mean. Just. Ju- again. A word of advice, not only to you, but whoever is going to listen to this podcast. Right. Okay. Uh. There will what you call controversies hmm. okay are essentially differences of opinion yes hmm. okay and uh, differences of opinion okay uh, will will always be there okay uh, in whichever organization you join hmm. now there are two ways okay you can either fight or flee hmm. okay in the sense if you say that oh i am not going to be political i am not going to take sides i am not going to be I, I'm just going to be a thorough professional. You're going to be right there in the middle, okay? And you get get shot at by both sides. Hmm. So, so you better you better uh, you you better get used to it, hmm. okay? I mean, I mean, you know, <coughs> uh, uh, the I mean, I mean the, the one of the persons who was behind Apogee, you know, his name was Professor Manke, okay? Okay. Quite quite a dynamic. Quite he was the person who brought about practice school and a lot of innovations, okay? Hmm. And he used to keep saying, "Just be professional. Don't go into, don't go into uh, controversy. Just go and do your work." A professional is someone who goes and does his work and comes out. Okay. No, it doesn't happen that way. Okay. Every every place that you go to, whether it's a for profit, whether it's a not for profit, whether it is family, okay, there are politics. Hmm. There is politics. Okay. Yeah, in in all situations, and. Uh, don't shy away from it. Okay, just wade into it. Okay, only thing is make sure that you're a winner in whichever, <laughs> yeah. in whichever battle. You need whichever to say battle is. tough to. Yeah, well, okay. I mean, I th- history is written by the victors. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for your time, Mr. Sundaram. It was yeah. a pleasure having you here. Yeah, it was a great time talking to you and listening. Yeah. To you. Very good. Okay, okay. thanks yes. a lot, sir. Yeah, and also thanks to whoever's tuning in, I guess.